Hi, Derek. Hey. Oh, you had to introduce some cute little girl. <laughs> I didn't get her name earlier um, uh, before we started. This is, so. this is Reagan. Hi, and Reagan. if you follow me on Facebook, she did a milk cheer earlier today, didn't you? Yeah. Milk toast. Yes. Did she but, spill any? No, it was a, f a little jug of it. She couldn't oh. spill it. <laughs> Good. Good but, job, Reagan. Yeah. <laughs> but she doesn't waste milk anyway. Oh, yeah. So you want me to introduce myself then, huh? Yeah. Uh, I run the TDF Honest Farming Facebook page, Instagram page. Um, I am a dairy farmer over in Tillamook, Oregon. I am fourth generation on the existing property. Uh, we've been in business for 102 years, but, and we've changed a little bit over the last 102 years. Uh, I do want to say that I look good for being 102 years old, but um, I, I started my page uh, three and a half years ago because I felt like there was a lot of misconceptions about dairy farming and dairy farmers in general. So three and a half years later, uh, here I am. Okay. So um, first of all, I want to know from you, why TDF <laughs> and then um, honest farming is I just love that because um, I, my kids know, I was like, what is one thing that I hate more than anything else? And they're like, lies. And I'm like, yes. Yeah. <laughs> so so is, um, very uh, hits home to me. So tell me a little bit about the name. So TDF, I originally, I started out as Tillamook Dairy Farmer, but as I started gaining traction and getting a following, I thought I should uh, probably step away from TD, uh, Tillamook dairy farmer because uh, there is 80 something members of the Tillamook co-op in this town and I didn't want to be speaking for all of us and it is a trademark name and I really didn't want my own co-op to be like you know Derek yeah so I I just figured I'd shorten it and then uh, it was actually my local checkoff people that were like you're pretty brutally honest on your page you should probably just call yourself uh, the honest honest farming so but you didn't put brutally honest you just stuck with honest yeah oh, yeah probably a good idea shorten it like you said mm -hmm. <laughs> so um you talked about you have been around for 102 years by you i mean your farm not yeah. you. okay so you've been around for 102 years but your facebook page has only been around for three and a half years is yeah that right about three and a half you talked about how your farm has changed. Can you tell me about how, and that wasn't one of the questions I had prepared for you, but since you brought it up, tell me how your Facebook page has changed. You already talked about the name. So anything oh, else? Well, yeah, well, originally I was gonna be uh, anonymous. I didn't want to bring all the heat back to my family farm. Um, that didn't last very long. Um, it's a small community and when people, it's pretty easy to figure out who's doing that. So I want to, eventually you just have to go, okay, I just got to own it. This is me. Um, this is my farm and go from there. How long were you anonymous for? <laughs> maybe, maybe a month, two months. Oh, okay. <laughs> very it, short. Very short. Well, you know, your friends and stuff start tagging you in your own stuff and saying, this is great there. Keep it up. And it's like, well, okay, this isn't going to work out. Cover blown. Yeah. yeah. Might as well just be honest. Yeah. That, there you go. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so that's how the, the whole ball got rolling. So mm -hmm. um, I, yeah, another one that I just needed to ask you, was there a kind of like, you had a ton, like, no, not ton. You have like a bazillion followers. <laughs> yeah. a lot of why like what are you doing and what happened what was was there like a defining moment or what's, what's going um on? well i treat my page like a business so i do listen to podcasts about uh advocating and uh how to work the algorithms so i think that has part to do with it but i also think it's because um i do a lot of video nobody nobody in this day and age wants to click on a link to go read a blog post or an article they uh the average person who wants all their information they want it in 15 seconds which is really hard to do which is why i do a lot of short videos 
Mm -hmm. uh, because the attention span seems to be getting shorter every year. Okay, so 24 hours of video, you would say no to that. Well, but, but you're, it's a little different when you're doing a, a you know, it's basically a telethon <laughs> event you're doing. So, uh, no, people will tune into stuff like this. They'll bounce in and out. Yeah, you're being gracious. Thank you. <laughs> I should have run it by you first. <laughs> I just go with my crazy ideas and um no well that's perfect though because half the you know I do a ton of videos and some of them fall flat I mean last year I think for world milk, milk day I poured milk over my head explaining the difference between whole milk two percent one percent and fat free that was not one of my shiny moments but you know sometimes you just do things did it get a lot of um attention or I mean, it probably got viewed by a hundred thousand people, but it was like, why is this dude pouring milk over the, his head? And, you know, sometimes you say <laughs> it, it, it definitely had some shock value to it, but it was like, my parents were like, why Derek? Yeah. So, you know, sometimes you just have to go with the ideas and sometimes they fall flat and sometimes they go places you never thought they'd go. Do you, you're not going to do that today then? No, no, I, I'm thinking uh, I'm going to play it a little safer today. I'm just going to do some video with the cows and okay. yeah, I mean, I already did uh, my tour, my Cali girl crib tour this morning. So I, I figured um, I if uh, I don't know if uh, very many people are tuning in. I can't see, but I'm imagining that um, some people don't know that you've already been up for five hours or so. <laughs> You're yeah, it's uh, I'm working on my sixth sixth hour now. Yeah, so lots of coffee. When do you sleep? Mm, I go to bed between nine and ten at night, and I'm up at two forty in the morning. Um, I try and get about an hour to an hour and a half nap during the day, but oh, okay. depending on the day, I sometimes sounds, don't get that. Sounds like uh, kind of how I grew up with my dad um, doing the milking shifts and mm -hmm. we'd have a, a big lunch and then he'd take a nap and then we'd be back out till, you know, eight or nine o'clock at night. So that sounds um, very familiar. So um I was watching, trying to get ready for this day and um, just trying to get to know a little bit more about like what you do. And um, I saw a video where you were like, I wish more dairy farmers would share their story. Um, why do you think dairy farmers don't share their story? Well, I think it's pretty obvious. Well, not obvious to the general public, but there's a lot of people out there that take the a uh, lot of pleasure in attacking those of us that do it um and farmers in general are not people that want to be out there in the public's eye they just want to farm spend time with their cows and enjoy life uh, so why would they want to put up with the attacks and the condemnation and just brutal people that are online yeah so um, we've kind of been experiencing a little bit of that <laughs> this morning. Yeah. Just wondering, uh, we've kind of blocked some of the people. Um, mm -hmm. We just don't know what to do. I mean, this is our, like, we're kind of small beans when it comes to the social media platform. So we start blocking. What, what do you do? Should we do that? I mean. No, you they, absolutely should. Because okay. these activist groups, they, I, I like to call them herds. They roam the internet in big groups and they will swarm your page and there's nothing you can do about it. Uh, you know, if you have several hundred people making rude comments on as many posts as they can get a hold of, you just have to, you, you can't, you can't combat them by allowing them to spread their myths and propaganda on your own page. I mean, most of us are running individual pages. We don't have any help. You can't deal with several hundred of them. You just can't. Yeah. So from like, um, the, for, well, I stopped at about, well, for you, it would have been eight, 
eight o'clock. For me, it was 11 o'clock. I, for two hours, I was trying to come, you know, in between posts and it just, I, I, you're right. I couldn't keep up. So we did start blocking some of those, but, um, yeah, it is kind of cool to see other people kind of engaging and being like, what are you even talking about? They're just trying to be mm-hmm. nice. So that was, that was kind of cool that people kind of stepped up and kind of, you know, got your back. So, yeah, it's a fine line. I mean, some of them are just there to just post memes and stupid stuff like that. And those ones you just, you don't even deal with. And then there's the ones that try and share their propaganda videos. You get rid of them, but every once in a while you get one that wants to possibly learn. And those are the ones you might try, but within a couple comments, you should know whether they're actually there to learn or if they're just trying to waste your time. Yeah, that's what I found. There was um, a couple of them that had asked like genuine questions. And I was like, oh, and then just a few comments later, it was like, where did that come from? <laughs> like a total a, like mm-hmm. attack kind of a thing. So it was weird. I don't know. We're, well, hopefully I don't have to learn this kind of stuff. I can just call you and you can tell me about it. Well, I hate to break it to you, but if you're doing a 24 hour live stream, the longer you're going, the more they're going to know. Oh, okay. Well, we'll see. Okay. Um, oh, I also watched, uh, we were in the freestyle barn. So we have uh, 1500 cows and we have a conventional parlor, mm-hmm. um, you know, parallel 16. So the cows are just milked. Um, they come to the parlor. And then our other location, we have the robot dairy where the cows can, um, is the milker station is right in their pens. So we have 500 there. 15. So we're at about 2000 milking cows. Um, our cows stay in the barn. I watched your videos and I love seeing the cows out in the beautiful green pasture. So we're in Michigan. You're all the way over on the other side of the country in this lush green. Like, tell me a little bit about that. Your cows, are they on pasture all the time? What do your winters look like? Uh, no, they're out for somewhere between six to eight months out of the year. Um, the rest of the time we are a freestall operation also because in Tillamook we get somewhere around 90 inches of rain a year so during the winter there's uh it would just be a mud bowl out there and it would just destroy the property and the soil and there would be no lush green grass for them to be grazing this time of year so absolutely not they are not outside and even during the summer we feed tmr in the barn because our cows are kind of spoiled it gets above 70 ish degrees and they hightail back to the barns oh really okay interesting yeah that's just going to kind of ask you like um so we have had the last two and a half years just tons of rain been inundated with that so yeah i was going to ask you like what are some of the challenges you already hit on like it's too wet at some points and you hit on it's too hot for the cows they don't like being out in heat um are there any so kind of talk about the pros and then any other cons that you can think of. And I also wanted to ask you, so do you think your cows are better than my cows? Or do you think you're like, you're a better farmer than me because well, your cows are on the grass and mine are in the barn. What do you think? Are you milking you? jerseys or Holsteins? We're milking Holsteins. Well, then my cows are better than yours because we have jerseys. <laughs> <laughs> but other than that, no, absolutely not. That's one of the things about my page is I try and dispel the myth. And I think I am kind of uniquely qualified because we do graze and we do freestall in the winter. And so I get to see that the cows are perfectly happy to be in the barns and they're perfectly happy out in the pasture. But, you know, the spring release videos are always popular. Everybody loves them. But sometimes during the winter, while I'm cleaning one of the barns, when I open the gate to let them back in, they do the same thing. It's like, they get excited to go back in the barn. Yeah. So, <laughs> you know, it's, it's, uh, it's not an either or, uh, as long as the cows are comfortable, it, they don't care where they're at, That's but I mean, it does make for phenomenal views, having cows out on grass and the mountains in the background, but yeah, I love your new, uh, drone video on that is so cool drone video it's on your facebook page oh uh not you, a drone? okay no that one is the one that's up on top yeah. that's that's been there for about a year now 
I told you. Oh, you guys. Oh, no, yeah. you didn't. Like, you told me you didn't tell anybody else. Yeah. <laughs> Just so you know, okay, everyone in the country knows about TDF Honest Farming, except me. I've just been in my little 84th Street bubble um, until quarantine that I got to spend a little more time online. Um, picked up some Instagram. That's actually where I found you. So my daughter was telling me to go follow you. <laughs> so I'm like, okay. Um, so yeah, I've learned a lot during quarantine. Um, not all, not all bad things. So, um, oh, we only have a few more minutes. Uh, what else should I ask you about? Um, oh, I know it said, what is the question you get asked the most and how do you answer it? Oh, I don't I don't think there is one question that I get asked the most. Um, and, but my pinned post has a lot of videos for, I talk with my hands, by the way, that uh, answers a lot of the questions I get asked. But the number one question that I used to get asked was, why are my cows so skinny? Mm. And it's like, people are so used to seeing beef cattle and, you know, the, the uh, cows that are bred to be muscular and have a little bit of fat on them because it is required to have a tasty steak that they don't understand a dairy cow is like a Ferrari that is built for milk production. All their energy goes into the producing of milk. And so they don't have a lot of extra fat. They are a leaner animal. Um, so that's, that's the probably most often asked last year, this year with that video, I've, I've done several videos about that, that uh, seem to have helped to explain that to a lot of people. Right. So let me get this right. You just it compared your cows to a Ferrari. Right? Yeah. Perfect. I was going to go when people have asked me, I'm like, well, there's different breeds or there's different purposes. Like, you know, a greyhound is. Uh, yeah, I've used greyhound and like bulldog. <laughs> Ferrari, like total guy would. <laughs> um, yeah, I did. I did get to watch the Ford versus Ferrari movie. I don't know if you saw that. It's pretty good. I haven't seen that one yet. Well, because we're in Michigan and it's like Ford country, mm. Detroit, you know. So anyway, watch it. <laughs> um, let me see what else I have. Two more minutes with you. So we talked about the cows being skinny. Um, I don't get asked that very much. Uh, usually, people ask me. Um, why don't the cows go outside? So we're actually going to talk about that tonight um, when we go over our um, environmental verification that we do on our farm because we have so many waterways that outline our property. And so that presents real challenges. We, um, that's like the boundary of our whole property is this uh, waterway. So um, that will add into that. And then- um, You want to talk about waterways with the guy that lives somewhere that gets 90 inches of rain a year? <laughs> So oh, presents challenges. Well, that's the other thing. I, okay, we're going to go back. Um, you talked about your cows are in the barn and you have all this pasture. Like, I don't know if we could get enough land base here. Like, that's what I was like. How do, even if I tried to get them, if we have 2,000 cows, I need yeah. like two acres of pasture per cow. Like, yeah. we're right near Grand Rapids, the Michigan's second largest city. How am I supposed to get... Like, how do you get land? What did you do? Just because you've been here for 200 years, you got a bunch of it and can like... Well, we only have about 500 acres. So okay. it's not like we have a lot of land, which is we supplement in the barns. That's what we do. We, we grow crops and we graze. Okay. So that's what I'm always like. Like, I just, it, okay, I want to get the cows out, but how do we even do that? Like, it, we just can't. Yeah, you get to a certain size and it's uh, it, very challenging to graze animals. Yeah. Without large tracts of land. Nothing is impossible though, right? Right. Yeah, that's true. And, you know, uh, so we've been in business for 105 years. And like you said, things change all the time. Like who knows what we're going to be doing in the next 10 years. Like mm -hmm. it could be totally different again. So I'm, yeah, we're just constantly changing and we're following data and we're um, like, you guys will see, we're interviewing tons of experts who are um, helping us make our decisions on the farm every day. So um, yeah, that's kind of how we're figuring out um, what to do on our farm and how to make decisions. Probably uh, similar to you, I'm imagining, have lots of people helping you. Yeah. Yeah, we do. Who's kind of your um, go-to at your farm? 
is it nutrition or vet or? Well, it depends on the situation. I mean, we work with several of veterinarians and we do have a nutritionist that balances all my rations for me. And so it depends. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, it's 12 and one. I went over. I didn't mean to. So sorry. It was really nice to meet you. I am so thankful that um, you just on a whim decided to agree to my ridiculous request. Thank yeah, you. Not a problem. <laughs> okay. So I plan on um, just hearing and watching and following you a lot more just so I can learn to try to do 15 second videos instead of 24 hour ones. So it's gonna be <laughs> well, my videos aren't 15 seconds, but I try and cram a lot of information at the very beginning because I know from data that it starts to really trail off on who actually watches after 15 to 30 seconds. I will um, live and learn here. So thank you so much. And I hope you have a wonderful World Milk Day. Um, I hope you get lots more milk in your beard. <laughs> <laughs> we saw that earlier. You guys missed it. But um, yeah, we, get, we got to see that. So yeah, enjoy and have lots of cheese. And the yeah. ocean shelf of. Uh, we'll see you. Thank you. Milk separator, okay? Okay. Shelf of milk separator. We have somebody coming in from the Netherlands now. Tice, Hi. can you hear me? Yeah, I'm starting the video. Hi. Yeah. Hey, we just went um, right to you. So you guys are getting action packed um, here. We went right from TDF Farming, who is in Oregon, USA. Now we're going to Tice, who's in the Netherlands. Tice is World Milk Day. Did you have to cancel or change around all of your World Milk Day plans so that you could be with us today? Um, I didn't even know about uh, the... <laughs> <laughs> well, Milk Day, I didn't even know about it. We don't celebrate it. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> well, you're celebrating it, whether you wanted to or not, I guess, right? Yeah. Well, I'm going to do it tonight then. Yeah. <laughs> this is the beginning of your celebration. So yeah. um, just a little intro uh, here. Tice was an intern at Swiss Lane last summer, and he um, stayed oh. with my family and um, just had a great time. He worked at a robot dairy and just learned a lot about um, kind of the compare and contrast and wrote a 22 page paper. How many pages was your paper, your report? Uh, I think it was 30 or 40 something. Yeah, that's a lot. He wrote a 40 page paper. Is that any good or not? <laughs> to try to compare oh, yeah. and contrast. Um, uh, dairy farming in the Netherlands versus the U.S. So um, I'm going to pick on you a little bit about that report. I want to hear um, what you thought about that. But why don't you um, tell us a little bit about you and about your farm? And yeah, start there. So yeah, my name is Thijs Kruiswijk. It's kind of a weird name for <laughs> in English. But um, so we have a, a dairy farm with uh, about now about 140 cows and we milk uh, 120 cows in two robots and we're uh, expanding. So at our second farm, we're milking 40 cows and we're starting to grow, uh, try to grow. And um, 30 years ago, my father started with uh, uh, growing garlic. So this is yeah, really interesting. And now we have about 60 hectares of uh, garlic. I don't know what it is in acres, but I think it's around 40 or something or it's more, I don't know. But so, yeah, that's, and we do all the market uh, for the garlic and we have uh, employees who, um, yeah, manage all the stuff and that's, yeah, so that's our farm. So what do people usually do with the garlic? Uh, and I put it in our food. Well, I know, but what kinds of stuff, like just anything and everything or? um yeah it's all yeah you can put it in almost everything i think it's just like a taste it's really good taste so and, okay so yeah, you don't just, have, like this is the um the main thing that this garlic is used for like what do you do with it? not really time? no everything it's really like a main ingredient on a lot of stuff like okay. pasta or soup you have you have garlic soup that's really good okay. uh, <laughs> yeah it's just like a yeah, okay. main ingredient so the stuff. garlic and milk, very interesting combination yes. that you've got. It is a very interesting <laughs> combination, yeah. Very diversified. Yeah, so yeah. Um, 
let's see. I was going to ask you, just tell us a little bit about what you learned in the U.S. and how mm -hmm. dairy farms were different or what, what did you experience? What are some of your takeaways? Um, so I learned a lot about American culture uh, for starters. Um, it's really, it's, it's kind of similar to the Western culture here, but it's also, uh, it's also different. They have different ways and America's really proud of our country. And I think we could be there also more a little bit in, in, in the Netherlands or in Europe. Um, and I also learned uh, about a religion because I'm not religious, but I learned, uh, at the link family, uh, what it means to them. And yeah, I went to church and I experienced all that and I never even experienced that. So that was really nice. Um, I read really the difference between farms in the Netherlands and in America, I think uh, we have way smaller farms and it's all uh, family. So um, the average uh, cows per farm in the Netherlands is about uh, 100 cows. And um, I think in, in yeah, America or in, in Michigan, it's way more. So yeah, that's, that's a big difference. And almost 90% of the cows are um, uh, um, a pasture is it in on the field how do you call it pasture right yeah so yeah. all the cows will go yeah outside almost all the cows so that's they just get the food from outside instead of uh, making the food for them and so that, that's that's pretty interesting as well it's a big difference um what else big difference yeah. i can't think of any right now but yeah. no 40 pages worth of stuff you wrote <laughs> but that's pretty good yeah, it's like financial there's a lot of big differences uh we have way lower so food costs and sorry so like the feed cost is what you're talking about for yeah, the feed cost is way lower here because um why is that because we, we feed way less um power feed i don't know what's called in english again like, like proteins and stuff like that yeah proteins and way less but okay. our um um, uh, average milk per day is also lower. Mm -hmm. But in comparison, uh, we still have a lower uh, food cost. And yes, it's just, it's just different, different. Um, it's hard to explain for me in English sometimes, but. Yeah. So is the feed cost uh, still like the number one expense that you guys have at your farm? Just like, yeah, that's yeah, it's still the number one. Yeah, okay. it's true. Yeah. Okay, so you don't do a whole lot of crop farming is what I'm hearing. Like we grow like corn silage and hay mm -hmm. and stuff like that. We don't do any of that. Yeah, we, yeah, we only have a corn, corn silage as, as well and a grass. So I, I think it's almost the same as hay. Okay. It's kind of different, I think. It's, it's, it's way wetter, I think, okay. uh, in comparison of what I saw at Swiss Lane. Okay. So talk about your cows, um, because one of the values at our farm is focusing on the cows. Um, we kind of pride ourselves. We think that, um, you know, everything we do and how do we change is there. Um, we talked earlier to one, our nutrition consultant who has a PhD in dairy nutrition, and we try to follow his recommendations and look at all the data and, you know, constantly um, making decisions based mm -hmm. off of what's best for the cows. So talk about um, interacting with the cows on your farm versus interacting with the cows here. You were here for two just over two months i think or two yeah. months yeah. so you get to i mean get pretty um a pretty good knowledge of like our cows um and their behavior and the health yeah. and can you talk about that um yeah it's it's almost the same we we also uh, on the on the key figures we always watch them and look oh what can we improve uh, we also talk a lot with uh, nutrition uh, specialists and see, okay, what kind of feed uh, are we going to put in the cows? And so they have better milk, uh, average milk per day. Um, and what else? Uh, see. So, yeah, I it's, guess like it's, uh, cows it's smaller. Everybody, yeah, everybody wants to know, like, are your cows happier because they're in Europe? Or, and they're sad because they're in the USA or you have a small farm and we have a big farm. And what did you, yeah. what was your thinking on same. that? It's the same, it's it's just bigger. But we have the same like, um, you know, waste that they're in the same barn kind of, not really. We've, 
because it's, it's really open in the, in the USA. I think in Michigan, the barns are really open and uh, here it is a really uh, isolated, not isolated, but the roofs are isolated. They have like, walls who can go up and down. So you can manage the climate in the barn. Yeah. Um, way expen more expensive barns in the Netherlands. Mm -hmm. They're more expensive in comparison. Hmm. Uh, but it's, 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 just, it's almost the same. I think the way of farming, it's almost the same. But if you would go to, I don't know, Norway or Sweden or something like that, that is way different because they're in the mountains and they even mm -hmm. smaller farms mm -hmm. and they get a lot of uh, subsidies from the government. Hmm. Okay. We don't, we also get subsidies, but not as much as, as they do. Right. Okay. Yeah. Well, cool. Um, thanks for that. Uh, so how are you, oh, I already asked you how you're going to celebrate World Milk Day. And I think this is it, it sounds like. <laughs> okay. this, this is it, yeah. <laughs> Good to know. And then the next thing, like what dairy products would do you love um, in the Netherlands? Like what's kind of like the cheese. popular? Cheese. Oh, nice. cheese. We, <laughs> we do have the best cheese in the Netherlands. Um, I would say in America I didn't taste any good cheese. I'm sorry. Uh, no. <laughs> oh, it's uh, okay. It is true. It's true. You should, the, the Gouda and stuff, it's really good. It's it's okay. way better. I'm sorry. Yeah. And you were like yeah. totally mocking our bread and stuff like that. Your bro, yeah, true. We were all like the broats, oh, yeah. Very kind of hard to please. So I don't know. Um, okay. So your cheese. Is there a specific brand of cheese that if we head to the Netherlands someday that we have to try? What's your favorite? Or type, whatever. Uh Gouda. Uh Kono, Kono cheese is really good. We don't deliver to the company, but it's it's the best cheese. Oh, okay. Um, uh, what kind of, uh, I think, a mustard cheese? Monster? Mix okay, you're cutting out. You're gonna have to just mustard. comment in the um, comment section. What are the best cheeses, okay? okay. I've never had good cheese yet, so. Yeah, they have a lot of different, they mix it up with uh, kind of nuts or other flavors, garlic even, garlic cheese, a lot of different flavors, that's that's really nice, so you have the different, we put it on our bread, always. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Mustard. cheese and bread, got it. Cheese and bread, yeah, we love our bread. All right, well, Tice, I uh, really appreciate you joining us for World Milk Day, um, if you guys want to Stay along. Um, we are going to be uh, celebrating with the locals, um, probably about eight miles away. We have a new pizza place called Michigan Farmhouse Pizza, and they're going to be serving us lunch. So um, we can't wait to teach you guys more about the food and how dairy is on your table and what goes into that. So whether it's from the Netherlands with Tice or from right down the road at the pizza place, um, you're getting full circle and we can't wait to share more with you.